Can I talk about our anniversary? This is our anniversary. We have shot YouTube videos for one year. I've had the best fun on YouTube for one year. Cheers to many more years. To make that happen, you're gonna have to like and subscribe so we can get more people, more gem lovers, and who knows, maybe we'll do some pretty cool unboxings in foreign lands, rooms that have better air conditioning. You can only wish. <laughs> the cool gemstones will keep me. One's heavy, one's light, one's medium. I feel like I'm Goldilocks right now. This one's too heavy. This one's too light. This one's just right. Chrysocolla, yay! Okay, I'm really excited. When I think of Chrysocolla, I think of bright blue hues, rough specimens. I haven't seen too much Chrysocolla in jewelry, but I do know that it can be carved into cabochons and beads. I would really love a big necklace. I feel like that bright blue reminds me of summertime. It'd be something I could wear to the beach if I were to have a trip to the beach planned. Maybe I'll get lucky one of these has a necklace. Let's do the too big, how about the too heavy? I think this is gonna be a specimen. It's pretty heavy and it looks like the same size as the specimen. I think it's gonna pop against the gray box. You know, you've got this big neutral and you're gonna have this bright blue specimen. It's probably gonna be pretty big. It's gonna look like a rough piece pulled right out of the ground. But hey, let's see, maybe we're surprised together. Oh my gosh! That's actually way brighter than I thought it was gonna be. That is so wild. Just a box of tricks here, aren't you? This is so cool, oh my gosh. Okay, so what's awesome about this is that it's you know a big hefty size. But what really initially caught my eye, there's that blue that we talked about, but I had no clue it would be this bright. This almost looks like neon. Yeah, a neon kind of color. You can see some teal right here. I like how you can see the banding. That banding kind of reminds me of the banding you see in rhodochrosite, only that banding is kind of a pink and looks like bacon. All right, so I love the greens. I love the kind of teal hues, but I really love is these concentrated centers of blue. Now, why why is that cool? Because this stone, you know, this is this is chrysocolla, but it's just so neat how one specimen like this, you can see all these different colors and, and the variations of color and the saturation. Another really neat thing here is that it is not all chrysocolla. You can see there's some of the host rock right here. You might be able to see some banding. Um, on the banding over here, I think it's cool. You can see more saturated greens, kind of a lighter green as well. That just looks like something from the Caribbean. Maybe Jack Sparrow found something like this. What do you think? No? Maybe? It's really smooth right here. I'm fascinated how on the back side, you know, this is just rock. If I was walking around somewhere, I would not expect that this would be, you know, paired with this bright coloring right here. It just kind of grabs your attention and grabs your eye. It's funny, you know, something as unassuming as just this host rock can be hiding some really fabulous colors. And I think that's one of the reasons a lot of gemologists love the gem business and the jewelry business is because it truly is a treasure hunt. And, and you know, these gray boxes, I, I think I kind of throw shade at the gray boxes, but <laughs> they're part of the treasure. You never know what's in the gray box. There is kind of a sheen or I suspect this was polished down, but then right over here, you can kind of see it almost looks like there was some sort of epoxy or what would I call it? I don't know, maybe some sort of varnish or something on here. And that could just be to protect it. You know, these may be rocks, but they're still able to be you know, cracked and scratch. And with something like this, you're gonna wanna protect it as long as you can. Because there are places right here, it almost looks like the varnish dripped right here. I can feel it kind of rough and then I can feel it kind of smooth right here. Wanna take a closer look at that? This I would honestly just put up on a shelf. Someone mentioned in the comics how every stone with me could be a bookshelf or it could be a bookend. Sorry, I misspoke. If you had a bigger slab, it could be a bookend. Honestly, I've seen a lot of coffee tables that they're kind of, you know, glass on top and then maybe wood on the bottom. Stick something like this underneath. I have a little shelf in my kitchen I could put this on. There's so many opportunities when you have a big slab of stone like Chrysocolla that has these great colors and great, I wouldn't call it a pattern. I would say, I'd call that a design. I don't, I don't know, what would you call that? The yeah, they don't, I don't know how I would describe this. It's an interesting talking point to have in your home, or hey, maybe you work at a, in an office 
and you have beige walls and beige carpet and beige everything, stick something like this on your desk. It'll, you know, maybe it'll spark some creativity and make your day a little bit brighter. I know mine's a little bit brighter, but that's not hard to do considering there's black, white, and gray in this room, so. You know, we talked about when you're cutting gemstones, you're maximizing the rough, you're maximizing the color, and you're maximizing the crystal. The same thing can be said with a, a mineral specimen. You know, when you are in a mine, you're not just gonna see these huge, like, you know, eight foot slabs of perfect color and perfect crystal. You know, sometimes people are gonna try to find the best. You know, maybe this was a part of the best, or maybe this was the color really caught the, the eye, but I suspect that this was mined and cut the way it was to maximize the color and material that they were given. Or they found. I love this. Do I get a um, party favor today for unboxing? We're gonna put a chain on that and you can wear it as a necklace. I am not wearing <laughs> this as a necklace. <laughs> Chrysocola chain. I suspect that this could be maybe a bracelet and if it is, I'm gonna wear it for the rest of the episode today. Or maybe a necklace. Could I get so lucky that it's a pair of earrings? Who knows? Ooh, that is so cool. That is fantastic. I would actually wear this around my neck. All right, so we have a little piece of, um, well, I don't think it's so little, but it's little when it's compared to that, but hey. I would say that this is, you know, a slab of Chrysocola. And if you turn it around right here, you'll see that the, it's placed on like a black layer. You see this a lot, this would be called a doublet because you've got, you know, the gemstone and then some sort of material on the back. You know, it could be any number of things. And the benefit of this is that when you add plastic or some sort of resin on the back or even glass, it kind of stabilizes the piece. You are able to use this not just, you know, as a display, but maybe in jewelry. A lot of times you'll see doublets like with opal, you know, there'll be something on the back of a maybe boulder opal. It's used for any number of reasons. In this instance, I suspect it's for stabilization. What really caught my eye eventually was the banding. I think that is so fascinating how, you know, Mother Nature, that just that comes out of the ground like that. Kind of reminds me of like sedimentary rock. I've been thoroughly surprised with both of these pieces because of the color. I love the patterns. I just think it's fantastic, especially that banding. That's one of my favorite pieces I've ever seen of Chrysocola. And I've seen a decent amount, so. Ooh, that is so cool. Oh my gosh. Wow, that is so cool. I love this. It's a great color. First impressions of this piece, kind of that light green, that blue right there, that literally looks like someone dipped that in makeup or spray painted that. I mean, that blue, it, it fascinates me that that comes out of, you know, that's natural. Another thing I also noticed, you see these like kind of bumps right here? Kind of looks like maybe a, um, oh, I don't know, bunch of grapes. That's called botryoidal structure. Gemstones like chrysocolla, malachite can also grow like that. We've talked about it in past episodes, but I always think it's kind of cool. When I was in gemology school, I always thought the botry stones that had botryoidal structure look kind of gross. But when you uh, see it in Chrysocola with those great colors, it's kind of hard not to be mesmerized by it. I don't know, I think we've mentioned Druzy in the past. It's, um, you know, kind of like the rough skin. You see a lot of quartz. I've actually seen some really cool Druzy, ju Druzy jewelry. Say that five times fast. Okay, so right there you can see some of the Druzy in there. And I love that dark green color. I love how with this piece there's, so, there's such a variation of colors. So you have the light blue, the light green, kind of the dark blues and the dark greens, those crystals right there. To me, I, that looks like a like Druzy. But this is a piece that I would love to put underneath the microscope. I feel like you can just get lost in it. You know, like, look at that right there. You can see the banding, the bright colors. I love all the different colors in here. I would consider this a specimen. I don't see any evidence of a polish on here. I would consider this a specimen. A specimen has value for different reasons than rough does. Rough has value because of what may come from it. So stones, you know, great cuts, great color. A specimen is valued for, you know, how it comes out of the ground, uh, what we can learn from it. You know, maybe the natural crystal structure. Pretty cool, huh? Of these three, what is my favorite? Honestly, I think Elizabeth is rubbing off on me. I'm gonna have to say this one. I love the colors. Actually, I don't I don't think I can pick favorites. I love these two because of the color. I love this because it, there was such a surprise when I pulled it out of the box. I had no clue it was gonna be this big of a piece and those colors were gonna be that bright. And I love this slab right here because I could see myself wearing that. Oh geez, what could I do? Maybe uh, wrap it in wire, find some way to set it. People get chrysocolla and turquoise mixed up. Like right here, those colors kind of remind me of turquoise. I do believe that chrysocolla 
was found in the American Southwest where there's a lot of turquoise there. There's definitely a way that you can mistake the two based on the color. I haven't seen a whole lot of rough turquoise though. You all know how much I love food, but you also know how much I love to travel. So if you are interested in finding some Chrysocola, head to Peru, Chile, uh, the Congo, where else? The American Southwest, Mexico, and there's a few others, but on my list, Chile and Peru are at the top. Why don't you comment below and tell me where you would go to find gemstones? Any country in the world that produces gemstones. For me, it's probably anywhere in South America. What about you? It frequently grows with quartz and opal, which I think is so cool because imagine you got so lucky and you got a trip to go mine chrysocolla or be in a chrysocolla mine. You find opal next to this. Wouldn't that be so cool? Copper in the gem and jewelry business is known to give stones kind of blue and green hues. We've talked about malachite in the show before, that green, we can thank copper, but we need to remember about chrysocolla is copper. We can thank copper for these hues. Pure chrysocolla is actually really soft and um, not that durable. And that's why this piece, I suspect that they put a, you know, a, a backing on it and it's a doublet now because it would make it more durable and easier to set, easier to wear and less worries. I want you to stick your hand down on the couch. Can you find an old penny? And does that old penny maybe have some green or blue on it? So copper, when it's exposed to water or air, um, it will kind of start to change color. Does that color remind you of anything? Yeah. We can thank copper for having the great hues here, but we can also thank copper and that oxidation process for the kind of cool bluish greens you find on an old penny. Wow, it's like coming off of my hands. Look at that. It, you really think it looks like broccoli? What kind of broccoli are you eating? Moldy broccoli? Thanks for watching today. I love the bright colors of Chrysocolla and I hope that you do too. I also hope that you learned about the benefit of copper or I guess the importance of copper to gemstones. Why don't you take a look at those colors? What went through my mind was wow. That's what went through your mind, huh? Wow. 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 Ellen Wilson. Wow. wow. <laughs> <laughs>